Good morning friends, welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss what is a recursion, what are the advantages and disadvantages of recursion, then I will discuss how to write a program to compute the factorial of a number using recursion. I will request all the students to watch the complete video for better understanding. We know that a function can call another function, am I right? We have function definition and function calling in Python. However, we will not have any function declaration. So, whenever you are writing a function definition, you can call another function. But if you call a function itself, then it is called recursion. So, a function calls itself directly or indirectly is called a recursion. Now, let me discuss with a simple example you have a function called recursion itself the name of the function is recursion okay and then you have some statement 1 statement 2 then again you are calling the function called recursion and then you have a function calling called recursion now look at here this is function definition And this is function calling. So, when you execute this program, first the recursion function will be called. So, once you call the function, the control will go to the function definition. So, it will execute statement 1 and statement 2. Again, there is a function called. Is it clear? Again, there is a function called. So, again the control will go to the function definition and again it execute statement 1 and statement 2 again it will call so the function is calling itself now what will happen here is that the statement 1 and statement 2 will be executed infinite amount of times so you have to provide the base condition and termination condition so somewhere you have to provide the termination condition otherwise the function recursion will call itself for infinite number of times so every recursion should have the base condition when the recursion should start and it should have the termination condition when it should come out from the recursion. Now let me discuss what are the advantages of recursion. A complicated function can be split down into smaller sub problems using recursion. So if you have a very complex program with the help of recursion you can simply solve it. And another advantage is sequence creation is simple through recursion then utilizing any nested iteration. If you want to display the elements in the Fibonacci series, I think everyone know the Fibonacci series. Suppose let's take the initial first two values are 1 and 2. Then the next element you will find it as sum of the previous two elements which will be 3. And the next element will be sum of the previous two elements 5. So this is the called Fibonacci series. If you want to display the elements in the Fibonacci series using recursion it is very simple as compared to the nested loops. Okay. Now let me discuss about the drawbacks or the disadvantages of the recursion. It is challenging to debug. It is very easy to debug the sequence programming but when it comes to the recursion it will be very difficult. A lot of memory and time is taken through the recursive calls. Now whenever the recursive function call is happening, a memory will be stored in the stack. So in recursion function, suppose let's take that you are calling a recursion 5. Then this function call will be there in the stack and then you are calling recursion 4, then recursion 3. All these function calls will be stored in the stack. Now let's take that it is returning some value then this value will be returned and will be here. Then whatever it will return it will be there. So finally that result will be displayed. So it will occupy a lot of memory for this recursive calls. So that's why people try to avoid the recursion because of this drawbacks. But however if you want to simplify the complex program it's better to go for the recursion. Now let me discuss how to compute the factorial of a number using recursion. I will define a function called factorial and it will take one argument called n. Okay, then I will write the column, then the indentation will start, 
So whatever the program I want to write or what are the statements I want to execute, if user call the function called factorial, I need to write here. So first thing I will check if n is equal to is equal to 0 or the logical r in python we will write with the help of or n is equal to equal to 1. So we know that 0 factor and 1 factor will be equal to 1. Okay, So when the n value user has entered 0 or n value user has entered as 1 then it should return the value 1 because the 0 factorial and 1 factorial is 1. Else if it is not 0 or not 1 then what I should do? I need to return okay n into n minus 1 not n into n minus 1 return n into factorial of n minus 1 because this is a recursive call. So you are returning this one. Okay. So this is the definition of the function. So these are the statements you want to execute whenever user is calling the function called factorial. Now I want to read the input from the user. Let me take n is equal to. I want to read the n value from the user so I can use the function called input then enter a positive number because we know that we cannot compute the factorial for a negative number. Then you know that the input function will return everything in the form of string. So I want to do the typecasting because I want to store the value as an integer. So I am using the typecasting as int. Now I will call the function called factorial. So I will write result is equal to factorial of 5. Okay, not 5 here, n. Is it clear? Then I will display the result. Print the result is or the factorial is whatever you want to display, you can write here and then give the variable. Now look at here how this program will be executed. Let me erase this one so that I can use this space. Let's take that user has entered the n value is equal to 5. Okay, then it is calling here factorial 5. Are you able to understand it or not? So now once the factorial, 5, factorial function is called, the control will go to the function definition. Now factorial of 5. Now look at here, what is the n value? n value is equal to 5. Now 5 is not equal to 0 or 5 is not equal to 1. So the control will go to the else block. Now return n into factorial of n minus 1. What is the n value? 5. Okay. Now it is calling factorial of n minus 1 which is 5 minus 1, 4. Now again the control will go to the, from here the control will again go to the function definition. Now here what is the n value? n value is 4. 4 is not equal to 0 or 4 is not equal to 1. Again control will go to the else block. Now return n into which is 4 into factorial of 3. Now again the control will go here. Now, now n, what, what is the n value? n value is 3. Again it will come to the else block. Now what will be happen? n into factorial of n minus 1. So which is 3 into factorial of 2. Okay, are you able to understand? Now again, n value is 2. 2 is not equal to 0 or 2 is not equal to 1. Again, else block will be executed, which is written n into factorial of n minus 1. So factorial of 2 will be 2 into factorial of 1. Now look at here, what is the n value when you call the factorial of 1, n value will be equal to 1. So n is equal, not equal to 0, but 1 is equal to 1. So now it is a logical R. This is condition 1, logical R, condition 2. 
already i have discussed about the logical or operator if any one of the condition is true entire condition will be true so as the condition 2 is true here the entire condition will be true in the if block if the condition is true this statement will be executed are you able to understand see obviously the indentation will be there okay so return will be ret start from here so return 1 so the factorial 1 will return the value as 1 so in place of factorial 1 you will get the 1 value. So, 2 into 1 which will be equal to 2. So, in place of factorial 2, the value 2 will come. 3 into 2 which is 6. So, in place of factorial 3, value 6 will be written. 4 into 6 which is 24. In place of 20, factorial 4, 24 will come. So, 5 into 24 which will be 120. So, 120 value will be written to the or to the variable called result because you are calling so after that return statement it will come to this one so result will consist of value called 120 that 120 you are displaying so this program will compute the factorial of any positive number and display the output to the user for better understanding i will execute this program in the jupyter notebook for you let me define a function called factorial In the factorial, I have an if condition. If n is equal to equal to 0, logical r, n is equal to equal to 1, I want to return the value as 1 because we know that 0 factorial and 1 factorial is equal to 1. Else, I want to perform the n into factorial of n minus 1. So, that is why I am returning n into factorial of n minus 1 this is the function definition now what i need to do i need to read the n value from the user so to read a value from the user we will use the input function enter a value okay as you know that input function will return everything in the form of string I need to convert into an integer. So, I am doing the type casting. Now, once I got the n value, I need to call the function called factorial by passing the n to it. And then finally, I will print the result. The factorial of a given number is and it is stored in the result. Now, let me run the code for better understanding. Let me consider the value is 5. You know that 5 factorial will be 120. Look at here. We got the 5 factorial as 120. Similarly, let us take that. I want to give a factorial of 1. I want to know it. So, let me do that 1. The factorial of a given number is 1. I hope it is clear for you. If you still have any doubts related to this concept, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.